What's going on, guys? Josh Pele here, and I got a special guest, one of my favorite players growing up, Eric Parker, former Charger receiver here in the flesh. What's going on, Eric? Hey, you got it, man. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure of mine. So uh, I'm going to start with the way you grew up. So you yeah. started out in Chicago, man. Were you always a football guy? Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't. I always was a fan of, you know, going out into the backyard, but I grew up doing uh, baseball, wrestling. I've done track. I did pretty much everything growing up. Yeah. Uh, I started playing football. Really, I got into it, you know, freshman year, got my feet wet, mm -hmm. um, which is a story in itself. And then sophomore year, had a couple games, but really started to come around my junior year. But I was a late starter in, uh, in football. I really wasn't even built to play football, I don't think. Yeah, you're a shorter guy, but when did you realize football might have been uh, your path? Uh, I just decided. Yeah? I just decided. I was uh, a really good wrestler. Uh, I was a decent baseball player, but I just decided that football is something that I wanted to do. Okay. You know, my dad used to always say, hey, man, you know, do something that can possibly make you some money in the future. You know, wrestling, you're going to suck on lemons and spit and try exactly, to make weight. Yeah. So I, I gave that a try. And, uh -huh. and it was horrible in the beginning. Really? Oh, I suck. You know. When, did you, when, did, when do you become heavily recruited? You went to Tennessee, one of the best teams in the program. Mm -hmm. I, did it just happen overnight or you just worked uh, hard it, for it? It, it? I caught two passes between my freshman and sophomore year. Okay. And one was a fluke tip, and the other one was a pass to me off of, like, a running back fake <laughs> into the end zone. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we were running. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was nobody. And all of a sudden, it's just my work ethic changed going into my junior year. Okay. And I decided this is what I want to, you know, commit my life to. And once I started doing that, everything started to change, and I got opportunities going into my junior year. And then it was just like, boom. It just all of a sudden happened. It just took off from there? It just took off. So what were your numbers like in high school? Were you, uh, were you like top player in Chicago, or how, how did that work? Yeah, so junior year, it was uh, I had a lot of interceptions. Um, I, I forget how many it was. Were it you was, at safety or corner? Uh, safety. Okay. Safety. And um, I didn't know what cover two, three was. They just said, go find the ball. Yeah. So I had double-digit interceptions, but I also had like six interception returns for touchdowns. And they were all pretty long. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the offensive side of the ball, I had, you know, probably another eight touchdowns and uh, close to 700 yards receiving. Wow. Off of not of a lot of, you know, receptions. So mm -hmm. those numbers right there garner you a little bit of attention as far as all area, all state. Yeah. And then now the colleges start knocking. Okay. So how did it work with Tennessee? Were they the first ones or were they the last ones? No, it was Ohio State and Tennessee were the only ones that said you could play receiver. Really? What did they want you to play, safety? It was defensive back, like corner. Okay, and you didn't want to play defense? I didn't want to. I mean, you think about it. When I went to Tennessee, okay. I was 149 pounds. No. I went at 149 pounds. So you think about that. Am I? Who's the biggest running back right now? Derrick Henry. Yeah, I'd hit him in his toenails. I mean, how are you going to hit somebody <laughs> at 140, 150 you pounds? Can't. You can't. Yeah. So I realized at that point I was probably built to play receiver okay and based on my quickness and my athleticism that fit me better because I wasn't a burner mm -hmm. but I was quick in a phone booth you know? yeah, yeah yeah so when you had to choose between Tennessee and Ohio State what sold you on going to Tennessee I don't know man I don't know I had a coach that was from Tennessee mm -hmm. uh Bob Bennett and was like hey you got to go there you got to you got to do this and I always stayed up late at night to watch Florida and when they had Jack Jackson yeah. and all these guys playing um I want to play in the SEC. Yep. Like, they throw the ball. Like, these were all the pros are going. Like, you know. So exactly. I figured if I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick between Ohio State, Tennessee. I like the SEC. I want to play in front of 100,000 people. Let me give it a try. So when you had to choose between Tennessee and uh, the other schools, you watched Peyton Manning and these guys that would throw the ball around. Peerless Price. Yeah, all yeah. those guys. Yeah. The thing is, Peyton Manning leaves. You go to Tennessee. You guys won a national championship your freshman year. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like? I know you're the main punt returner on that team, correct? Yeah, yes and no. I think by default. But I, I got there I got there when we played Nebraska in the Orange Bowl. So Peyton's true senior year was my freshman year. Okay. And then he, I think he stayed another year. Oh, okay, okay. And that's how it worked out. And then T was the main quarterback. Um, I, I don't know, man. Like, your original question was what, again? Well, how was it like to be on a national championship it team? Was, it was cool. Yeah. It was cool. It wasn't. I wasn't a factor. I wasn't a big contributor. So I was more of a national champion by default mm -hmm. in my mind than I was an actual guy going in there, grinding out, getting the yards, and, you know, really contributing to, to the win. You feel like you didn't contribute to the national championship? No, man. 
man. I wasn't. And when you think yeah. about it, you get the guys who are really out there week after week since day one, week one. Mm-hmm. Um, those guys, to me, get the credit. I was somebody who was just a more of a supporting role, and you know, it wasn't quite my time to step in you know, in those roles. Okay, so yeah. what was it like playing with Peyton Manning? I mean, you have the privilege of playing with two of the, in my opinion, five greatest quarterbacks of all time, Peyton Manning and Drew Brees. Was Peyton Manning that guy in college? Could Peyton you tell? Manning, Peyton Manning was that guy because yeah. he was dead. He was always very dedicated. Mm-hmm. And again, I wasn't on the field with Peyton, but I was around. I was in the weight room. I was in, you know, the, the offseason workouts. Mm-hmm. Uh, you would go up there, see coaches and who's coming out of the quarterback meeting room. It was Peyton, you know, so he yeah. was a pro long before he ever got to the NFL. And yeah. that was just his work ethic. And it was fun to see that. And there was a, you know, a number of guys who were like that. But I think Peyton Manning was a little bit on another level. Is it similar between Peyton and these great players you've played with, where it's just they put in the extra work, not only on the field, but in, in the film room as well? Yes. You can tell the difference. Anybody who's good in any industry that they're in, they have those characteristics. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's it's like one track mind. This is what I'm all about. This is what my life is going to be. And I'm going to execute that plan and nothing else matters. Do you think being around guys like Peyton and Drew that are so into their craft has helped you as a person outside of football, the way you live, kind of looking at other people like that? Yeah. Yeah. I think anytime you're you're surrounded by teammates who are like that, mm-hmm. it makes you better. And, 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 you know, you have those characteristics in yourself as well, but it holds you to a higher standard. I agree. Yeah. When, I, when I play with Jalen Hurts, not to cut you off, but when mm-hmm. I play with Jalen Hurts, people would say, what's he like? I said, this is his life. You know, football is his life. A lot of guys on the team, they drink, they party, they do, they do their thing. Mm-hmm. Football is what Jalen does. And I think there's something to say about that. When you're around guys like Nick Saban, Jalen Hurts, you're around Drew Brees and Peyton Manning, these guys just make you want to be better. And I think I think it's interesting, man, the way people live their lives and they, they're so dedicated to a craft. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's difficult. Yep. But you went to the Chargers, and most guys don't put up better numbers in the NFL than they do in college. That was your story. You were a huge playmaker for my favorite team, the San Diego Chargers. Was it different being more utilized as a receiver in the NFL as in college? At least that's what it looks like on paper. Uh, I think it was different. It's not that you couldn't have been utilized more at Tennessee. It was the lifestyle choices that you were making. Okay. And, I, and I wasn't, you know, I'm not a felon or a criminal or anything like that. But when you talk about dedicating yourself to your craft, mm-hmm. I think that is the biggest difference between not having the success that you wanted at Tennessee. It wasn't anybody else's fault but mine. It was all self-imposed adversity. Getting a, a shot to come to San Diego and you're like, hold on, wait a minute. I'm a pro. This is how I have to conduct myself. And my whole life is going to be about football and getting my body strong and reading up on my body and nutrition and everything that has to deal with performance. Mm -hmm. And I think living your life in a very clean way, a very, um, very dedicated way, that is the main difference. Okay. So when you were in college, you were just being a kid, you were drinking and partying that kind of thing. Yeah. I was just being a Yahoo kid. You know, you can't mix, you can't mix nightlife and athletics. Yeah. Yeah, You can't mix nightlife and athletics. It doesn't work. So when did you realize when you were in the NFL that it wasn't going to work your first day? You were with the Texans first, correct? Yeah, Texans, but I didn't get any reps. I went there for a mini count and I did, right after the draft, but I didn't get any reps. And I was just like, all right, I see where this is going. Might as well start to look for another avenue. And you thought then, football was over? I thought football was done. Really? Yeah. How, okay, uh, Texans were dog shit when you started there. Well, they're an expansion team. Okay, how do you not make the Texans? Because you're a huge player on the best team in the NFL with the Chargers. How were you not even getting reps with the Texans? Uh, it was just one of those things. You come in and you step in for a one-on-one, and they say, hold on, step out. We want to give this guy a look. It was like, okay. Like Andre Johnson? Uh, no, I don't even think he was there at He wasn't the even there yet? No, I don't even it think It makes he no was. sense that you weren't on the team then. But it does in a way that I wasn't dedicating my life. Okay, you to weren't the guy the that you were with the Chargers yet. And I wasn't that guy. Okay. So I quit and I say, all right, this is my career path. I was getting ready to go into looking into becoming a firefighter back in my hometown. Really? Where my cousin was, yeah. And I was just working at Bally's Fitness as a personal trainer. And I was working out every day. I was running the hills at night and just because I like to work out. And all of a sudden, my uh, girlfriend at the time, she was like, yeah, a team call from California. They want you to come out and uh, to participate in training camp. And I was like, well, what team? She was like, I don't know, just a team in California. So I'm like, all right, they're going to call back. So they do. 
Uh, it was the Chargers. They said, can you make a flight tomorrow and be here at, let's say, 8 o'clock in the morning? So you got to catch this flight. And I was mm-hmm. like, yeah. Okay, so you fly out to San Diego, you do your tryout, and then how, how does that work? They just offer you a um, training camp spot? Yeah, it was actually two days into training camp. Okay. So it wasn't even like a tryout. It was just like, you're going to be a camp body. Okay. And then you did well enough for to stick around, obviously. I guess. I don't know how it worked <laughs> out, but there was a bunch of guys who were injured. One guy, I think um, a, a receiver from UCLA, Brian Polly Dixon, I think he quit. Curtis Conway was hurt. Tim Dwight was hurt. Maybe there was some contract type stuff going. Mm-hmm. But I got there, and it was me and Dondre Gilliam. It was a good training partner of mine for a long time. Okay. Uh, who was on the practice squad the year before, and it was just the two of us. So when you when you were on the Chargers, did you realize that you had a shot of making the team, or did you think, I just got to work my ass off and just do what I can? I was just going to get to lunch. Wow. I was That's just going to get man. to the dinner. Yeah. And I packed very light. I packed a toothbrush, two pairs of underwear, two pairs of socks, a T-shirt, long sleeve shirt, and some pants. That's crazy. That's it. How stressed were you? Um... Stressed in a good way, knowing that I was going to give everything that I had. Mm-hmm. Um, I was never intimidated. I mean, once you play at Alabama or Tennessee, I mean, the speed of the game, it's not going to get faster. It's just more technical. Yeah. So I figured, hey, what am I going to lose? Exactly. I have everything to gain. So when you were with uh, Drew Brees and Philip Rivers, you guys have like instant connection with those guys? Or what was Drew Brees at first? Did, was, did, he, did he have a connection with you? Um, It wasn't so much of a connection. It was just you had to work your 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 way into that okay and i think the connection comes later when okay you're in a position now where we may have to depend on you so start working but drew was always very cordial he was cool okay you know if you were in there and you were open you were getting the ball yeah he's gonna put it on you yeah yeah so when you were going through preseason and whatnot when did you realize you're gonna make the team was it not till the very last last day when they cut people i didn't i don't think i ever got comfortable enough to say that i'm a part of this team until maybe two three years in how you're one of the guys on the team you were a big time playmaker on the chargers yeah but you also have to look at you know what's around you who they're who they're bringing in and so i always felt like i had to battle for every catch every you know every time i got a rep on the field it Mm -hmm. was like i gotta battle for that and that was just my mentality so I don't ever feel like I fully arrived. I would never let myself get that comfortable. That's good. You should never feel that comfortable or complacent. Right. When you're with Gates, uh, LT, Breeze, was there a star star factor with any of those guys? Like, I can't believe I'm on, on the same team as this guy. Or is it never that way? Um, I think it, for me, it was um, Junior Seau. Okay. Junior Seau. So it was one of those days during training camp where, um, you know, I was thinking like, I don't know, I've had a couple of bad practices. Is this the day where you get the, the infamous pink slip in your locker? Yeah. And, you know, I was feeling, you know, let me get down to the locker room early. And I hear this voice behind me like, Part, hey, you're doing a great job, man. It's, hey, you keep it up. You're going to be here for a while. And I'm thinking like, who the hell is this talking to me? <laughs> and I look back and, you know, it's like, oh, it's Junior Seau. That's and crazy. I, inside, I'm like, holy shit, it's Junior Seau. But on the outside, I'm like, all right, man, that's cool. You know? <laughs> trying to play it off. Yeah, cool. trying to play it off. But I think that was the star factor. Um, and that compliment, I think, got me through the rest of training camp. Mm-hmm. So that's how that's how tough that guy was. Everybody else, I think Doug Flutie was there. There was another story with uh, we finally ended camp, and they were like, "Look, we're gonna head out to Sal's restaurant. Have you ever had sushi?" It was Breeze, Dwight, Flutie. I was like, "No, I, I give it a try." <laughs> so we go through the night, and everybody's gonna stay out late. But Flutie says, "Hey, I'm getting ready to bed, getting ready to head back to the dorms. Anybody want to go?" And I was like, I'm in. I'm gone, right? And I'm not staying out here getting, you know, lit tonight. Yeah. So I realized we're driving on the 5 North in Flutie's Red Viper. And I realized, holy shit, man. I'm going like 85 miles an hour on the 5 North back to training camp with Doug Flutie. With Doug Flutie, yeah. So that was kind of like another star moment for me. But other than that, you know, that's as far as it went. What about Gates? Gates was more of a quiet guy, huh? Gates came in later. I okay. remember Gates, when he came in, he was number 43. Wow. And everybody was like, man, this dude's raw, but, man, who is this guy? Yeah, what made him so good? Is the way he got open? I think so, man. Just understanding 
how to create space. Yeah. It looks like a, he's always boxing guys out like basketball, trying to pick his spots. Yeah, but if you watch the way that he moves, he'll square you up and he hesitates really good. He has some good misdirection. And uh, same thing that you would – I think you got to be good at um, – at basketball to create your own offense and space off the dribble. Mm -hmm. And if you look at his movements, to me, it was a lot like that. It was a lot of carryover. And what people don't understand about Gates, he was a stud football player coming out of high school, from what I understand. I thought he was just basketball. He played football, too? He played football, too. And I think originally was supposed to go to Michigan State to play with under Saban, maybe. And, okay. and, and play basketball there. And then once he got there, they kind of gave you the – Pick one or the other. But I'm not sure that's the true story. It makes but, sense, yeah. Yeah, but I think that's one of the reasons that he didn't play That's interesting. Uh, he was my favorite player on the Chargers. LT was my guy too, but I thought it was so interesting how Gates wasn't, didn't look that fast to me. Probably was really fast, but he didn't look that fast. He's always open, mm -hmm. and Phillip Rivers and him had that connection. What was the biggest similarity between Rivers and Breeze? Because it seemed like they were just so different as like personality-wise. Personality-wise, they were, but they both wanted to win. Mm-hmm. They both wanted to win. They were both heavy competitors. Um, very confident. Very confident. You have to be confident if you're quarterback. Yeah, and they were knowledgeable about the game. It was always fun to have uh, Doug Flutie sitting right here, Bree sitting right here. They're talking back and forth, so I get that every day. And then you got uh, when you know Rivers finally came in, I think it was 04. Yep. He's down there. He'll chime in a little bit. You know, you always know where he's at. You know, you hear his voice. That's so cool. But they were – they were different as far as their body types, but the way that they wanted to win, the way that they prepared, mm -hmm. it was the same. Did they get along? I, as far as I know, they did. Okay, there's always those stories that they didn't like each other. I don't know. I never got that. You never got that, okay. I never got that. Um, that team under Schottenheimer, man, 04, 05, 06, that was some pretty good teams, man. There were some tight groups. Great teams. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are the most pro bowlers in the league for like two straight years, I think. Yeah, man. Yeah. But everybody seemed to really have great work ethic. Um, you got the sense that guys cared about each other. Um, guys prepared for, you know, for one another. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just a great time. That was one of the better teams I've ever been a part of on any level. Yeah, the 14 and, and 2 Chargers. I didn't want to bring it up, but I have to bring it up. Yeah. The 14-2 2006 Chargers are the greatest team to not win a Super Bowl, in my opinion. Would you agree with that statement? I think we had a real shot. Yeah. You know, and for me, not to make it about me, but that team was awesome. Awesome. Was well coached. Uh, the players were all the way into it. Um, but, damn, talk about the best team that I've ever been a part of. But also, like, that game, the worst game of my life. Worst game of my life, and I wasn't playing. Yeah, and I still haven't recovered from that. Really? I still haven't recovered from that. I don't think anybody ever can. Um, you, you, you put a lot of pressure on yourself. You hold yourself accountable to a lot of things. But you never got a chance to really redeem yourself after that. So, for me, it's, it's been – you haven't walked around with a lot of pride necessarily on your career because you're based on your very last game. Was that your very last that game? That was the very last game that I ever played. And it was a real kick in the nuts for me personally. How was that the last game you played if you were such a huge contributor on that team? How did you not play? After that, it was uh, toe surgeries. Okay. And then that got me out, and that was it. That's wow. That's how quickly it ends. You didn't get offered from anybody else to come over to a training camp or anything? I, sh I should have probably just taken a year off to heal and then get back in. But at that point, I was I said no. I had three toe surgeries. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the last one they were talking about fusing one of the the joints in the toe and wearing like a steel plate and I was just like my game is speed and quickness yeah and if I can't do that then maybe I should think about doing something else but perhaps I, I threw the towel in too early 27 years old about 27 28 okay yeah it's the age yeah. I am right now so to rewind a little bit how was it in the locker room after after that game was it just I didn't go into the locker room I went, hey, I went into a back room and I took it out on my helmet and <laughs> I just was like, I was, I think I was too ashamed to even want to get up and, you know, at, answer questions or anything. I just, I really wanted to be alone and I was just thinking about like, how many people did you just let down? Like, what did you just do? Did you feel like it was part of your fault? Oh, I felt like it was a hundred percent. Why? I don't know. It's just when you put that much care and effort into what you do, um, 
damn, man, it's like that hit you. At that least you weren't Marlon McCree. I mean, imagine him. But he was around for the other other parts of the season. And, like, I'm not going to point fingers. Like, I only look at myself. Yeah. And it should have never been to that point. Yeah. You know, but, I mean, he was a major con- contributor throughout the year. Yeah, he was a good player. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. He was great. But I'm saying imagine how the way he feels after. I mean, I don't know. It just sucks being that one guy. At least you weren't that one guy where people point at you and say, you know, Eric Parker's one of the losses this game. Yeah, I feel like I feel like it was. When I turn the film on, if I catch a couple more balls or I don't muff a punt or I don't do something like that, I think we're in it. Because when you play people like the Patriots, they capitalize and on they everything. score points yep. on, on those kinds of things. So I think I was doing too much because I wanted to be the guy – like Coach Schottenheimer had always been so close, and I said, I'm not going to be that guy. Mm-hmm. So instead of studying whatever normal hours of film work that you do, you double it. Instead of getting one massage, you get two. Yeah. Instead of eating three meals, so you're overreaching. And anytime you put something on a pedestal, I don't, I don't think that you can really perform the way that you're supposed to. And you got into a big situation, and you made it bigger than what it was. Mm-hmm. And think I think too much, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you want to do too much. Yeah, unfortunately, we have uh, something in common. My last football game ever, we lost to Clemson in the national championship with one second left. Mm-hmm. And I can regret, I can never, I can never get over that game. Yeah. Um, I, I still wake up sometimes middle of the night, and I think about that. And it just sucks, man, because there's nothing you can do about it. That's right. And it's not so much how it affects your life. I think it's more so your teammates when you let your team down Mm -hmm. because you always want to add value to your team. You always want to contribute to your team. You Mm -hmm. always want to make your team better um, because you are a part of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And and I think that is when you get guys like Lofton, you man, I'd run through a brick wall for that guy. Same thing for Schottenheimer and Steve Crosby and all the people that, that stuck their neck out for you. I think those are the people that you think about and your teammates like, damn, you what know? could I have done? Yeah, because, hey, how many – LT should have had a Super Bowl. You should have. Guy, all you guys should have. Yeah, they, those, yeah, but those guys, they deserve that. You're talking about, like, all-time great players? Yeah, all, they, they, they deserve yeah. that. And, you know, how, how can you help get them there? I mean, I was always playing. I played for my teammates. Mm-hmm. You know, I played for my coaches. You know, I played for my family. I wanted people to say, man, hell yeah, we represent that guy, and that guy represents us. You think that's the legacy you left behind when people think Eric Parker, he was a team guy, he cared about his teammates? I hope so. Yeah. Professional, work ethic. Um, that That's what that's what I would want to be remembered for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's come full circle now, man. You're coaching at Helix. Mm-hmm. Um, how is it to be on the other side of the ball being a, being a coach? I love coaching. You love coaching? I like coaching. I like coaching just as much as I like playing. Really? Yes. Because both of them involve uh, the process of preparing. Mm -hmm. Now you're trying to get people who may not want to do something. You have to give them a mind trick to make them think like, I don't like this, but I kind of love it. And you're trying to get people to do things that they normally wouldn't. Yeah. So when they have success, you're you're able to teach them a couple things and they have success. That's the million dollar payout. And you're helping young people get to where they want to be in life. It's rewarding. It's very rewarding. Yeah. How many yep. kids scholarships have you got? I know you got your son a scholarship, correct? He's a, he's a track athlete. Yeah. Eric, Eric is at UC Irvine on a track uh, scholarship right now. And he has some great coaches and Rodney Van and Monique Van and Demonsha Jones. But I haven't gotten anybody a scholarship. At Helix? No, I've never gotten anybody a scholarship. You've helped get kids scholarships by helping they've coach helped, them. They've helped themselves get the scholarships. Of course. They have to earn it. But you've helped them as well. You show them a couple things that make the game a little bit simpler, but they got to execute. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So being at Helix, being a program like that, does it make you want to take your coaching to another level? Maybe uh, working with some Alabama guys, some receivers at colleges. Have you thought about that? Yeah, I would like to stay more so on the private sector. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that I would want to be a college coach or a professional coach Mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that you'd be working for an institution or organization. Uh, I would really like to do it on my own. Okay. And work some in some capacity, work at a high school um, in athletics. So maybe if you had to teach a class, you could, but be there to coach as well. And then in the evenings run, you know, something on 
as as your own business. Of course. But you know, I went. I've been preparing. So I got my master's in in coaching and leadership and athletic administration. And then within the next nine months, I'll have uh, my second master's in exercise science. So congratulations. I'm, yeah, I'm starting to build up towards. This is how I want to monetize everything and make my career. That's awesome. And you came out from my dad's baseball team, Benita Vista, and taught the guys how to run. And I thought uh-huh. that was just so cool that you're putting time in the community like that. I also want to thank you, man, for coming in here, talking to me. Um, I hope the people enjoyed it. It's Eric Parker, former San Diego Charger, uh, my friend. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for having me, man.